while I am just applying this string of LED lights to the inside of the 1947 Ford grill. My idea is that this will light up the back of the grill and make it kind of pop against the background on the whiskey bar. My goal is to run it behind each one of these grill patterns. It's going to be a little bit tedious, I think. It comes with a controller. It's amazing what, you, what they're uh, doing with LED lights these days. I think the options are going to be nice for whoever uh, ends up with this little whiskey bar. We got power to the unit. Let's turn it on. Oh, that is the smooth transition from red, green, blue, white. That's going to look sweet. I'm going to temporarily mount it for you guys so you can take a look over there. So I've got uh, mounting blocks for the uh, grill. I'll mount those in a little bit and permanently attach it. But it will be sitting on the center supported that way. And then the uh, side grill will be mounted right about there. I purposely did not alter this grill in any way from the condition that we got it except for mounting the LEDs. I wanted to preserve it for whoever ends up with it in the future. This old Kennedy tote is almost the perfect height and since I'm working by myself I don't have extra hands this is I think going to be a good spot to mount the grill. Let's give it a go. Oh that's going to look nice. Oh. I am pretty pleased with that. This is going to be Beth's um, sales counter. I think she's going to be uh, sitting pretty sweet with this thing. Looks awesome. These are all the uh, screws and hardware. I painted them flat black so they won't uh, be distracting in the final assembly. Well, it's been a busy couple of days here on Mountain View Ranch, and right behind me, you'll see this whiskey bar that uh, Beth and I are creating. Unfortunately, or fortunately, Beth and I have collected a lot of vintage items, and uh, we've always had an idea that we want to set a shop up here in the barn or on the property somewhere. This is going to be Beth's uh, sales counter. So. This is going to be somewhere in the booth that she'll use like this for sales. It's got the right elbow height, I think, uh, for a whiskey bar. And that's kind of the inspiration for this. This will be, for us, whiskey bar number three. The first two we built for the barn sale and artisan event that we held here on Mountain View Ranch. I want to say it was last month. It was just an awesome success. We had a great time and a lot of people came. I built two of these with uh, barn wood and corrugated metal, and uh, they actually sold. So Beth and I said, let's build another one. In the time between the uh, barn sale and this trip, we found this. Uh, this is a 1946 or 1947 Ford grill. It was right before Ford made a big change in their style and manufacturing in 1949 after World War II. If anybody watching this is a Ford uh, person and knows more details, I'd love to hear from you. We picked this up at a vintage shop. Uh, a lady was setting up a booth for uh, 4th of July and she just literally hung this the, the day we were there. Had a, some American flags sticking out of it and some red, white, and blue things draped off the grill. We took a look at the price tag and I thought it was gonna be NFS or not for sale and it had an awesome price. I think she actually underpriced it. Beth and I walked around the shop. We talked about this grill quite a bit and we ended up picking it up, bringing it back here to the ranch with the idea being that this would be a great showpiece or front piece for a whiskey bar. Now this whiskey bar is built with material from a local sawmill that was cut up for a barn as siding. And then some of it is material left over from the barn that we tore down before we built the barn that I'm standing in right now. This piece of material right here for this end table is actually from our old barn. It's about 12 inches wide. I've cut it down to about 11 and a half, I believe. Yeah, about 11. When I did that, there's this little broken off piece that 
when it went through the mill, it must have, it was rough cut and it really didn't matter because it was for a barn. And when I finished it, I'm using uh, DIY paints, uh, chalk paint, awesome product by the way. This kind of got highlighted and I thought, well, I'll just trim that off with a track saw. But as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking if I cut it just right, I can leave a portion of that and I think it'll be a nice defect to include in the table that'll add a little character. So that's kind of my goal there. Now this all came together, um, I saw some images on Pinterest and on Instagram that were inspirational small um, coffee tables using DIY hairpin legs. I've been following DIY hairpin legs on Instagram uh, for quite a while. I've had in the back of my mind I want to make some tables and I finally made the leap and, made, and purchased my first set of four. But these legs are going to be the legs for this end table and what really gelled this particular project uh, for me I saw on I um, can't remember if it was Instagram or if I actually saw it in a vintage shop they all kind of blend, <laughs> blend together for me but someone had made an end table um, and used old yardsticks as edge banding on the end table and when I saw that I knew that I had these boards I had DIY hairpin legs in the back of my mind. The next shop Beth and I went to, there was a whole can of yardsticks that were being discontinued from that uh, vendor at 50% off. So I picked up four, I made this top, and I ordered these legs. I need to just put some finish on the top of this table. And I also want to put some finish on these yardsticks so they will sort of maintain their look. What I don't want to do is put a gloss or semi-gloss finish on these yardsticks because it'll look fake, I think. So I'm going to use Rust-Oleum clear matte finish that will provide some protection to the yardsticks but will not make it look like they've been finished. I'm also going to apply that on the surface of the um, end table. I want the um, I want the wood and the chalk paint to be part of the experience of the end table. I don't want it to be all glossy and, um, and, and look like it's had a plastic finish applied to it. So one thing I will avoid using is a polyurethane tabletop finish because I just think it won't look right. I want someone to touch this and, and feel like they're touching old barn wood, which is what it is. Wow. Well, that's exactly how I envisioned this, but I think that's going to be a very cool vintage hairpin leg end table. I know Beth wants to sell this. I'm not so sure. I am not going to start the edge banding at, at one and wrap around like that. I'm going to try and center the save time, save gas, save money, one-stop shopping center. And I'll center that as best I can in the middle and I'll cut it at either end. What I like about these yardsticks, these used to be um, advertisement um, for stores. They used to be quite plentiful, not so much these days. Nice, all right, good. This is the last piece. Okay, we're done. Mm -hmm.